Hey, you there, subscribe. Ooh, ah! Anyway, we have a light control here. Can change the color by just moving this empty around. So let's start a new project. We need a text object and then go to the font settings. Make sure that our fill mode is set to none so that we have lines only. Uh, this is going to make it easy for us uh, to work in geometry nodes. Let's set up a new geometry nodes. We need to give this a curve thickness. So I'll do a curve to mesh, then a curve circle, connect that, reduce the radius, the resolution can also be minimum. There, add a plane for the ground, give it a material. And let me just borrow one from my materials. Just search for concrete, add that. Go to material view so we can start setting up the lights. Go to the world, change it to dark. Go to the materials, set up a new material. Make sure it's uh, an emissive material like this. Turn on bloom. Now, because we're using geometry nodes, we're going to need to set up as a material node here. So go to geometry nodes, set material, connect the material to input, modifiers, select the material we just created. Now we should see this. Just increase the strength here to 10. You can see we have the, light, the emissive object, but we are not really getting any light in our scene because we're using EV. If we were using cycles, this would be enough because cycles supports mesh lighting, as you can see there. Since we want to work in EV, which is the first arena, we are going to add a point light like that. We want this point light to be part of our text. So let's grab it from the outliner, drag it into our view nodes, and let's create instance, grab our object our light object geometry connected to the instance and use the points from our text or the geometry from our text from the group input into the instance. So that is our points. Now, if we click on the instance node using Alt Shift click, we can preview that instance node, but we are not really seeing anything. And if I turn off this light, you won't see anything at all. But uh, you will, all you want to do is turn on the as instance option and I should be seeing these points at this point lights on each vertex of the text. But we want to have control over the amount of points or point lights we have in our scene. So let's add a resample, a resample curve between the geometry input and the points. This can make it easy for us to control how many point lights we have. You can see when I add more, you can start to see the outline of the text, but we don't want that many. We just want a few make it seem like the text is the one emitting the lights. Just like that. Now we can join back the text and our instance using control and drag to this. And basically we have a text that is emitting light. One extra issue we are having is that the light from the point light is not the same as our text. So let's fix that with some drivers. We're going to add an empty. We're going to use this empty to control the color of our light. So let me bring it here, just like that. I want to be able, when I move it in the X direction, I want there to be more red. When I move it more red in the light, and when I move it on the Y, I want it to be more green. Basically, the, I want the colors to align to match the axis colors. So when I move it in the Z axis, I want a little bit more blue. And then when I move it around, I want the combination of different colors. So to do that, let's start with our point light. Let me bring that back here. Now go to the color and right click on that. Add a driver, show drivers. Now we'll have this uh, pop up. Go to the light and you can see the different components of the color broken up into RGB uh, options. So each has a driver and uh, that driver has an option to select the object to control that color. So I can select the empty here and now the color, when I move this on the X axis, we should get more red in the light. And uh, when I move, so let's go back to the light again, go to the green, select empty and change the type from X to Y. The default is going to be X. And that's why you see when we selected the, the object here, 
it went directly to the X location. So just make sure they correspond to the different color groups, colors. So select empty and then the type Z. So that when I move this on the Z, we get more blue. When I move it on X, we get more red. When I move it in the Y, we get more green. And uh, moving this around, we get a combination of colors. But still, the text is not changing the color. So let's fix that. Go to the object, go to the material. Uh, you can see it also has a color option. Let's do the same thing for this, add a driver, and uh, expand these shaders. And you can see this time we have four inputs instead of three. But that's okay because the third value is just alpha, which we are not going to touch. It's not. Ah, okay. so then so let's go to the red, do the same thing. Select empty x for the red, empty y for the green, empty z for the blue. Now, when we move this around, we should basically get the same colors. If the colors are a little bit different, make sure that there isn't an added value to this. So you can see all of these have a value added to them. So the x, the default, the expression has a variable plus a number. We want it to be, this is going to be just an additional value to the number. We don't want that. We want it to be just the, so that no additional color is added on top of what on top of the movement of our driver. So like that, and now you can see the colors match. The only issue is that when we move closer to the center of the text, the text become zero. So let me have my cursor, this move to the origin. You can see the, ten, this, the text becomes black completely because the value of these is now zero. To fix that, we're just going to go back here and add a small value like point one so that all colors ha don't start at zero we want point one so that it's never totally black so now we get that and the great thing about this is that uh, this is editable editable like that download project on blender everything.com like subscribe see ya later hey you there have you heard of human generator 3 this is what it does it lets you generate characters within blender and uh, lets you customize the characters features from their race shape body type anything and i just show you the demo here what it can do it also has these proxies that lets you instance the character anywhere without uh, slowing down your viewport performance uh, making it easy for you to add more characters in your scene uh, without incurring any cost in performance at least in the viewport and then you can render them as fully rendered objects or fully rendered uh, characters in your scene it also has a cloth library where you can change the characters clothes putting all the tools you need to make your character your own and customize it to your liking so if you want to get this add-on links are going to be provided in the description uh, for you to check out thank you